Hotep, it's your brother Beniti. I'm gonna read back for another clo uh, another post, another class. Um, what I kind of wanted to talk about <coughs> um, on this post is uh, on some of the emails, um, on some a lot of the questions I've been getting on on, on a lot of things that's going on current event in the news. Um, we'll talk about that first. I'm gonna stay. I'm gonna stay the whole thing on it. But it kind of it kind of ties into what we're gonna talk about in this post. Was gonna go um, another route and continue with some of the Emerald Tablets of Tahuti, but uh, before I came on and started recording this, uh, something happened that took me away from this. The spirits got my attention um, and kind of wanted me to, to talk about what we're going to talk about now as opposed to what we, what we were going to talk about. Um, we get, I get a lot of emails about, and you, you, could, you could feel the energy in the atmosphere. You could feel, you could feel the energy uh, permeating everywhere because um, people are in a different mindset uh, with a lot of stuff that's going on in the news be it a lot of these uh, racial shootings, all these incidences that's going on with the police. Just a couple of days ago, you had the incident in Chattanooga, Tennessee, where uh, another another um, episode of domestic violence took place. Um, people contact me, what do I think it is? What do I think it means? It's an that. Personally, what I think it means doesn't, that shit is irrelevant. It's not a matter of what I think it means. Um, what I think we need to put into perspective is the effect it's having subconsciously on people um, and it's affecting people on a multitude of levels that needs to be addressed. Uh, some people you have are in complete fear about this. Um, they think it's the end of the world, they think it's doomsday, they, they attribute it to apocalyptic garbage and religious, religious nonsense. Um, so it has nothing to do with that. You have another mindset of, of, of radicals who want to be revolutionaries, and that's the other thing I'm tired of hearing. If um, you're going to take it to the streets, then, then just take it to the streets. Stop talking about it. I don't, I don't want to hear about what you're going to do, you know, uh, how you're going to retaliate back against the white man, etc. To me, it's comical. It's garbage, and I keep telling people that. Um, so if, you, if you're going to be about it, be about it. Stop talking about it. Um, because to me it's, it's nonsense and irrelevant and what a lot of these inc incidences are geared towards is getting a reaction out of people and I keep telling people that it's to feed off your emotions to get you to react and not be proactive um, you can't react off a of pure emotion without being in a sound mind and being and mentally sound so you'll have some revolutionaries that will say, well, for people that are not down with this call, they, cause, they just scared. No, that's, that's not the case at all. It's just you can't go into war without a, without a plan, okay? Uh, a football player, especially a quarterback, doesn't go to the line of scrimmage without calling a play or has a plan. Uh, a baseball player, a pitcher, does not pitch to a batter without having a strategy or a plan. Vice versa, the hitter goes up with air with a strategy to hit the player. Uh, excuse me, <coughs> can use that for any sports analogy. I'm just giving you a metaphor. So if you're going to be a revolutionary, there's got to be a plan. Um, you can't react off a of raw emotion and just say, we're going to take it to the streets and do this. Um, you know, what weaponry? What's the war plan? Um, because it's not going to make a difference to take to the streets, take out one or two of them, which opens the doorway and the pathway of them of, for them to take out hundreds and thousands of us because they have the technology in the tank. And if you don't get that shit, um, then you're a complete idiot, a, cl a complete buffoon, point blank. So you, there's nothing you can say otherwise on that. So if you don't agree with that and you think you're a revolutionary, just take it to the streets, shut the fuck up, and stop talking about it. It's that simple. There's nothing even to discuss on that. Then you got your religious, apocalyptic, doomsday people that want to attribute a lot of these events that's going on in the news and they want to correlate it to religious uh, text and they want to use the Bible and, and, and the world prophecies and the time prophecies. It's very easy to go into these books and pick out excerpts to kind of suit it and twist it and fit to what's going on today um, to make it look like it suits the ideologies and the beliefs of these religions because it 
at the end of the day, it has nothing to do with any of these faith-based religions. It's, it's completely ridiculous. Um, but you'll have people that'll pass it on. They'll use their religious faith systems and belief systems to say this is confirming um, it's it's the end of the world. We're in the end times. I did a post um, not too long ago on there's no such thing as the end of the world. We know this is just cycles. The planet constantly goes through changes and cycles. Um, we know that the planet Earth in itself, okay, is roughly 24,896 miles in circumference. We know that a, a equinox is 25,000 years, an epoch is 50,000 years. We're living in the transition of that epoch era, which is two equinoxes. So what tends to happen is what brings about this change is nature, okay? And I'm going to explain how that works. Nature also affects the energy spiritually and how humans react and evolve and change spiritually, mentally, and emotionally. And it deals and ties into the, to the consciousness or evolution of consciousness. Um, so once the truth circulates the planet, one mile per land mass or one mile per year, and this is what the nation of Islam and the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the five percenters were trying to teach in the lessons, once truth makes that circumference, the planet goes through a renewal period. That, that change or that renewal period is brought upon by the spiritual energy of the people. Um, that change has its effect physically in humans and it also has effect in nature. So we're constantly bringing about this change. We're forcing this change. There's a scientific explanation for it. Every great culture prior to us, whether it's Native Americans, the ancient Egyptians, the Aztec, the Mayans, various different Af African tribes, always talked about these renewal cycles and renewal periods. So the planet is going through changes. Those whose subconscious minds are in tune with that spiritual vibration and energy are working with that change, or they're working with nature. They're not going against nature. And therefore, they're making that transition. Those that are not working with nature or not making the change, the transition is not going smooth for them. And in turn, it's creating a lot of chaos and confusion within themselves. The biggest battle that an individual is going to fight, and I've said this a million times, when you spiritually awake or you get into spiritual consciousness, the biggest enemy or adversary or war or battle that you will fight is against this, your very own mind, okay? It's not going to be against people, individuals, dogmas, doctrines, or religion. Once you start to spiritually wake up, then you start to battle the inner workings of the mind. Because I've said before on numerous classes, it's an inward journey out, not an outward journey in. And that applies to both aspects of the spiritual battle. The good, or what you term the good, and the bad. And that's going to be based on your perception of where you're at in your spiritual evolution. So you'll find people that get into spiritual consciousness, and I've said, I believe I've touched on this. If not, I'll touch on it now. Um... It gets harder for them when they start to wake up. Now think about this for a minute. All of us that are deal with spiritual consciousness, regardless of what age you are now. Let's use an example if you're 28 years old, 29 years old. And just say for your whole life you were raised as a Christian. Okay? And it doesn't matter if you were raised as a strict Christian or not so strict. You were raised with Christian ideologies. <clears throat> and say three, four years ago you just woke up and started to come into spiritual consciousness. Okay? you would still have to eliminate 20 plus years of brain motion. This is what we mean when we say the subconscious mind has to be reprogrammed of everything it's been taught. Because everything we've been taught from birth has been wrong. Point blank. It's been wrong. So that's still embedded in us. And this sometimes creates the inner war we battle with ourselves when we start to go up along the spiritual path, especially in the beginning stages in the first couple of years, this is why you'll find some that overcome those obstacles and battles, and I did a class on that, overcoming obstacles on a spiritual journey. You'll find that either people get over the hump and start to really take off and grow, or some people don't get over the transition period and then they go back into the religion that they used to be, and sometimes it's even more drastic than the first time. They go back and become more fanatical because it becomes a comfort zone for them. 
um, because they become very insecure and their fears kick in and fears is what creates your insecurities so they'll tend to, to, to get jammed up on that level and they become more fanatical and go back into their religions and that's why I say it's the power of the mind and the power of the subconscious mind and some people just can't get over that hump so all these things that are going on in the news are having a multitude of effects on people it's creating certain levels of trauma on people now I've said if you're spiritually in tune and this is why I always I've, you've heard me say you're either part of the experiment or controlling the experiment those that fear these things and don't understand them or are confused about them it's confirmation whether you're aware of it or not you're not doing the spiritual work those that are doing the spiritual work are raising their vibration and their frequency these things are irrelevant to them. Irrelevant in the sense it doesn't affect the journey. It's just confirmation of the journey that we're taking. And we know that the change is necessary and it's being brought about by ourselves. Stop looking for outside reasons why these changes are happening. It's the same thing. We're looking for some apocalyptic, uh, cataclysmic event to explain these things. We are bringing these changes upon. Our consciousness, our, our intellect is what's bringing these changes upon us. So individuals that are working with nature and are spiritually in tune shit's irrelevant to us me personally I couldn't care about any of it in the sense that it doesn't affect the journey the journey continues and like I've said before it's not going to get easy and I don't say that to sound negative I don't say that to sound disheartening the fact is it gets tougher as we continue this journey and we're going to see more radical change as we keep you know going down this journey now not only in the, with the racial incidences we have a lot of domestic terrorism that's going on that people are concerned about um, and I, like I said before you know you, you gotta worry about the motherfuckers that have been in this country for years okay that have been here are grounded here are rooted here like you and me who know the landscape who pose more of a threat because you're dealing with a mindset when dealing with these Islamic fanatical terrorists they have no regard for life and sad to say it's not to trivialize human life the only way you can combat that and and for what they do is is it, it, it's tragedy because life is lost but at the same token and I don't say this to be disheartening again or cruel and not compassionate because again anytime human life is lost it's a tragedy um, but we can't act surprised that this happens now on American soil because you got countries all over the world where people in the Middle East and Africa live in fear like this every day, unfortunately. Um, you have these, 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 these whack jobs get on school buses, okay? And they have no problem blowing themselves up on school buses. So we tend to be a little bit, you know, surprised that it's going on now. Uh, because let's be real we as Americans have become very spoiled with our freedom and liberties and fact of the matter is it's confirmation of the days and times that we live in it's a different day and time but for those that understand it understand it or overstand it know that this is part of the change this is necessary this is this is what's happening and and we can't be fearful of it we have to embrace that change and, and not let it control us and again that's why you either control the experiment or you're part of the experiment so what I think about these things the shit is irrelevant it's how you are putting it into perspective is the, is the key how do you understand it how do you absorb it because it's not about you know that aspect of it because I find and I've said this many times I find when people ask you what do you think about this and for this example I, I, what that really they're saying subconsciously they want to hear you say how they feel about it so they can be secure about their insecurities now I'm not saying that to, to anybody that's emailed me to, to downplay it but those that know me know I'm not going to tell you what you want to hear I, I'm going to tell you how it is and that's just, that's just the way it is so it's not a matter of what any one individual thinks it's a matter of where, you, where are you and your understanding of it um, because that's another form of insecurity so again we can't let these things um, disrupt the journey they're part, they're part of nature taking its course you hear that saying all the time nature just taking its course but that's a little scientific terminology 
Um, so when you deal with the metaphysics of it, it takes it to a whole other level. Now, you have many different people out there that have different perspectives. Um, like I said, you have the revolutionary. Um, you have the intellectual. You have some people that their specialty is, is they deal with the science aspect of it. They like to deal with uh, science and biology and, and molecules and atoms and plasma and how the human body works and herbology and cleansing. And I believe all these things are necessary. You have people that want to specialize in the history of Africa and Egypt and our cultures. I believe that's necessary. Um, you have your revolutionary, like I said. All these have a place and a part, and they are necessary, but at what point do we take it to the next level? Because those things can only take you so far. Now, if we're not taking that information, like I've said, and updating it for the now in this day and time, the shit is irrelevant because we can sit around all day and talk about how great it, it was back in Egypt at one point. Um, but that's irrelevant um, because that's not going to that's not going to bring the necessary change other than the educational aspect of it in this day and time. OK, it's not going to bring the change we need to go to the next level. And don't misinterpret that. I'm not saying we don't need the education and the knowledge. But when we over-intellectualize things too much and we get stuck in that mindset, we, we lose sight of the spiritual work that we really need to do to take it to the next level. And you can definitely over-intellectualize and let your humanity and your emotions cloud your judgment and proper way of thinking. Some people tend to do that when basing a decision on topics such as this. Terrorism, all these racial incidences, um, their opinions and feelings on certain information. You, you have to draw the conclusion based on wisdom, not on your personal emotions and your humanity, because your personal emotions and your humanity, nine out of ten times, are not right. And it has nothing to do with that. And unfortunately, in war, there are casualties. And we, we, we need to be compassionate and understanding. Not everybody's going to be on the same uh, level that you are in your spiritual journey. Um, so we, we have to keep be mindful of that and, and try to raise people up. But at the same token, we're in a time period now where we have to speed the process up. And unfortunately, in that process, some people are going to get left behind. That's just the, that's the reality of it. We're not going to paint a picture that everything is roses and peaches because that bottom line is that's just not true. So we don't, we don't want to deceive people in, in, in painting a false picture. Um, so that, that definitely has to be taken into account and understood. Um, because we, we, again, we don't want to be fake to the masses and phony. Um, so again, it's, 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 it's where you take a stance on it and, and, and where your level of perception or knowledge and information is. Because not everybody's going to perceive it the same way. Let's just be real. Um, everybody perceives information differently based on where they are in their spiritual journey. And, and everybody's going to perceive a multitude of things I say differently. Um, and again, it's not about what I'm saying, if you like it or not. And for, you know, bottom line, like I said, I couldn't care if you do or you don't. If you do, great. It just makes our companionship smoother. But this is not a business to be like. When you deal with the truth in that process, some people are going to love what you're saying and some people are going to hate what you say. And... Again, that's letting your humanity and your human emotions getting involved and clouding your decision process, which that's that's always nine out of ten times going to lead you down a, down a, down a bad path. So the bottom line is, you, you you have to know how to put that in, to, into perspective. This is not a business about being like. This is about a business of awakening, teaching, <clears throat> and educating. And that's why we do this. That's why we use the social media, not for buffoonery. Uh, not to get on there and, and act like a clown and, and, or, or, or beg and, and, and act like your individual is in need of attention. Um, the proper mindset is this is a great tool. We can use social media now as a mass tool to educate millions of people all across the world. When 15, 20 years ago, you didn't have this technology. You didn't have this tool. So that's taking something as a negative because most people today are using social media for nonsense, gossip, slander, attacking, buffoonery. I mean, you name it. That's not what this, this should be used for. Um, it, bottom line, I mean, we could take this and make it a positive. But again, when you're over-intellectualizing, and unfortunately there's a lot of that going on right now, and like I said, I see it all over the Internet. I see now uh, House of Consciousness, for an example. 
Uh, they're getting ready to do another big debate on uh, creation and evolution, and some say they're two separate things, some things say they're the same, some things say they're connected. I'm with the latter of those that say there's a connection between the two. Um, and this is great. We can have these topics and debate all these, but at the end of the day, what's the point? Are we, is, is it instituting solutions to our problems? Is it getting people off of drugs? Is it creating financial plans? Are we coming up with the war plans? Other than melanated people debating melanated people, which again, I'm not saying there's no need for the education, but at the end of the day, what's the point? Now, people will have varying opinions on that, and you're entitled to that. <sighs> but when there's a consistent pattern of nothing being accomplished, then we have to question the motive. And like I said, I, I don't really play the debate game, um, and even though I could, um, because like I said, I don't debate with religious people or get into that whole debate unless, you know, you get stupid and you need a slice of humble pie, then I will do what, I, what needs to be done. But I won't waste my time and energy on any of that type of nonsense because, like I said before, everybody brings a unique gift to the table. Not everybody's going to see things the same way. Not everybody is going to have the same aspect of doing this, teaching this information and this knowledge. If we did, then it would be boring, number one, and number two, it would be a problem because if there was one complete way to do everything, then we would be back in the same boat for the original problem we're all suffering from, which is religion, because that's what religion claims, that there's one exclusive way to do things, and that's just not the case, unfortunately. There isn't just one exclusive way. Um, and again, like I say, everybody has their own talent, brings a special gift to the table. I focus more on the metaphysical aspect of it, the alchemy aspect of it, uh, spiritual magic. Um, and I've always said before, these are the highest sciences is what's going to take us to the next level. Because people say, okay, you keep saying that over-intellectualizing and beating a dead horse and blah, 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 this and that. So what's the solution? The solutions are quite simple. And I get this all the time on Facebook, and, and, I, and I've addressed this on the Facebook pages. Um, the solution is working out spiritual magic to alter the energy grid of the planet and to alter the spiritual energy around us to make it work for us and not against us. Because when we do the rituals and the magic, ritual, the rituals are what transform the energy. The mantras, the chanting, working collective magic as a group or ritualistic magic as a group and individual magic as an individual, which are two separate different things and have two different purposes. When we work these highest sciences, they know we as melanated people are naturally in tune with these sciences. So when we work this magical power, this is what's going to take us to the next level. Not just sitting around talking about how great we are. Well, what good is that greatness if you can't put that greatness into practice? That's the whole point. So the question I keep posing to people is, when do we take it to that next level? Or are we just going to keep holding intellectual debates? That's the problem. That's all that I'm saying. But nobody wants to sit there and show you, For they'll say for one, we were this and that in ancient Egypt. Back then, we, we were great. This people, we had these higher sciences. But then ask him, what are those higher sciences? And how do I take those higher sciences and put those higher sciences into practice? Now, now look at the dumbass look on their face. Um, we have to get together and now put the formulas into practice. That's my specialty. I deal with magic. I deal with spiritual alchemy. Because again... This is what's going to take us to the next level. And something that I usually don't do on a wide scale level, I just put up a promo video, and some of y'all might have watched it already, um, offering this service on a one-on-one -on -one basic, or, uh, not on a basic, on a one-on-one -on -one personal level. Um, I am willing to take the knowledge, the information, and the gifts that I have and work with people with it if they are interested in doing that. Um, so that's not just talking that's putting it into practice okay that's what I'm talking about so again I'm not saying there's not a need for the education and the intellect we need that but we're not taking the education and the intellect and putting it into practice because I don't see anybody on a wide scale level trying to do that and that's the level that I'm talking about that we need to take to take it to because this these are the things that will reprogram the con subconscious and get your vibration and frequency on the correct 
level that it needs to be on. And then you'll find out trivial things or things that are creating trauma in your life are irrelevant. Okay? The problem with a lot of us, unfortunately, is we tend to gravitate to certain aspects of consciousness that we like. And let me give you an example. Some people are fascinated with the Egyptian aspect of information, so they focus on Egypt. Some are fascinated and get stuck and, and only want to focus on the Orishi or the West African traditional systems. Some of our people get caught up in Hebrewism. Or, or, or Judaism, and they get stuck in that aspect of it. These would be your black Hebrew Israelites. Um, some people get so stuck and focused on Islam, they become Islamic fanatics. Um, so the problem is you cut off the evolution of your consciousness when you gravitate towards one specific aspect of, the multi of a multitude of information, which are just, these cultures and religions are just fragments of our information. You, you cut yourself off from that, that connection to the divine consciousness. This is the problem that we have. We have to learn to take all of those things. A great mystic, a great spiritual scientist, a great alchemist, a great metaphysicist studies all of those things and masters all of them. And not just picks and chooses the things he or she likes, but picks everything. If you're a student of the universe, you have to study all of these things because how are you going to be able to intellectualize and give feedback on things you know nothing about? That's just like you got cats walking around, want to want to build with you on masonry, and they never went through a masonic lodge. That's ridiculous. Okay, it doesn't work like that. You don't you don't have the level of experience, and there's certain things you have to experience because you can read a million books on it. It's not the same experience. Um, these are things that we need to put into perspective because we're living in a day and time now like I said we need solutions talk is cheap stop talking about what you're gonna do and just do it now myself and others like me can make that claim because we are doing the work um, you would only know that if you work with us personally you will see the work that we're doing outside of the intellectual aspect of it, the educational aspect of it. This is one aspect of it. But for those that want to take it to the complete next level, then it's time to work the higher sciences, the magic, connecting with your ancestors. These are the things that need to be done for us to go to that next level, point blank. So the question is, how much longer is it going to take for people to come to this to, to this realization? Okay, so when we use the term reprogramming the subconscious mind, let's focus on that for a quick minute. What does that really mean? What, what, what does it mean to reprogram? Excuse me, the subconscious mind. Like I said, everything we've been taught from birth has been wrong. And you have to rewrite it. It's like having a pro having a computer program or a hard drive uh, that you need to program. For an example, when it when it's overloaded with bad information and it crashes, you need to reprogram it. Well, that's how the subconscious mind is. It's like a computer. It stores all this information, and that information sometimes can be so overwhelming, you can overload, and it needs to be reprogrammed. And we use the term, and you hear us use the term, your thoughts create your reality. Okay? That's just not a cliche. That's a fact. You create the illusionary world that exists around you. Okay? By your thoughts. Um, this is what movies like The Matrix were trying to teach. The Matrix, or the, or, the, or the matriarchal world that you create, is created by your thoughts. It's all an illusion. Now, having said this, and not to sound fucking crazy or out of my mind, but how do you know? You're watching this video now. If you're watching this, I'm talking to you personally. This video is recorded, so-called captured in time. How do you know that this is what you're watching is real? How do you know it's not an illusion? Um, how do you know, really, it's a reality of what you're seeing, you're hearing, you're listening? How do you, how do you know you're not a byproduct 
in somebody else's dream, experiencing somebody else's nightmare. How do you know the things that you think you're experiencing as a reality is only an illusion? I'm bringing all that up, not to sound mumbo jumbo, but to say, to get you to think in the mindset, what do we really know? Do we really know anything? And the bottom line, if you were honest with yourself, you would say, no. You really don't know anything. You know information that you grasp on to assimilate, and once it's in your comfort zone, then you identify with, which creates the illusion that you think you know something. Okay? That's the bottom line. Now, you might have your own opinion on that, your own take on that, but that's the reality of it. Okay, you say, no, 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 well, I know, but you know because what? Even if you deal with science, you know because you had to go to a book, and you had the book still spark the answers for you, maybe to do the research or the experiment to come to the conclusion, but the bottom line is you still didn't know. Then you made yourself aware. Well, we have to take ourselves to the state of mind where we're not questioning no more. Now we actually know. And the only way you go from do you not really know to do you know is by changing the molecular structure of your body number one making yourself less dense to transform your DNA and raise up your spiritual vibration tone and frequency and that's why we've been focusing on that so hard then you go from what do you really know to I am I know you understand understand overstand whatever term you need to get you through the damn day so this is why the subconscious mind has to be reprogrammed to get it into that mind state um, you can look at this in a multitude of ways. Um, I don't want to use the term good or bad because there's no such thing. As we've said before, they're just different degrees of vibration. That's it. Um, so when being posed with, with these challenges, and to, 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 to leave it on that note, we can't be overwhelmed by it we have to have solutions and and we and we just we can't talk about it no more because we're not living in a day and time where we have time again to to just be talking it's it's just it's irrelevant at this point um in dealing with a lot of changes that the planet is going through that we're witnessing on on a daily basis okay Again, with all the things that we see going on in the news, uh, especially people are acting shocked and surprised, and I've said this before with, uh, with a lot of the police brutality. You're seeing stuff that's always been going on. Let me, let, me, let me stress this again. You're seeing stuff that has always been going on. It appears to be new and shocking because, remember, I said earlier in the class that there was no social media back then. There wasn't all this technology back then. So now there's cameras everywhere. Social media is capturing everything. So any one of these events that go down, they're captured right on the spot. They're uploaded, and it's circulated all over the world. And this is done intentionally to create a reaction in you. So it's not that this shit is new. It's just there's so much technology and social media now that is capturing it right away, and it's, and it's, and it's showing it to the masses. This is the reality of, of what we got going on. Now, another thing that, that people are not talking about, and I want to stress this, it's not just, quote-unquote, black melanated people, straight black melanated people being abused by the police. You have all different ethnicities of melanated people being abused by the police. I just read an article today, matter of fact. Um, you can go onto the Microsoft Network, their home news page, and there was an article I read today on the high level of persecution against Latino people and the police abuse that they face that nobody's talking about. Um, so this goes on on a consistent basis. But somebody is single-handedly handedly focusing, trying to get a emotional reaction out of you. That, that's bottom line. That's a fact. Um, so, again, you have to look at this thing in a broader picture. You can't get sucked in on, on the emotional aspect of it. You can't let your humanity and your emotions cloud your thinking and cloud your response. The sensationalism, it's all done intentionally 
to tap into the human emotions. And like I said before, I could, if I can control your emotions, I can control you. Um, we have to take this into account, into account too. And people keep forgetting this. And, and, and I'm down with all this stuff. I'm not saying it's not true, what I'm about to say. But I'm going to show you, again, how we can over-intellectualize and sensationalize shit. Um, you hear people talking about chemtrails. They exist. We know, we know they're putting stuff in the atmosphere that's creating this metal taste in our mouth. It's messing with our respiratory system, our nervous system, um, our neurological system. Um, they're attempting those. We know they're messing with the water. We know they're messing with the food. Okay? Obvious proof of that is you can see these young girls, 12, 13, 14 years old, looking like they're 22, 23, 24 years old because of all the hormones that they're injecting in the meat. And obviously it's being put into the body of humans and it's, it's, it's all altering the body structure. Yeah, we, we know that that's true. Um, we know they have the heart project and weather machines and how they can alter the weather. All these things you have individuals out there in the conscious community believe are being done to us to, to fuck with us. Okay. But in that same process, when you look at this from a metaphysical standpoint, what's the bigger picture of that? Think for a quick minute. What's the bigger picture of that? If all of these things are being done, and you have people that accept and believe in them research that all those things are being done on some level is confirmation of what? That not one of them is working. Because the very fact that they have to use all these different tactics to try to destroy us is confirmation they can't destroy us. And confirms everything that I've been saying. We either control the experiment or we're part of the experiment. So none, one particular thing is working. You're always in control. You can be the facilitator and the governor of your spirituality. They can never do that unless you allow them to do that. So this is where we can get caught up in the sensationalism of it. Because we have a lot of us that like all the conspiracy theories and the sensationalism. But if you understand that you are your own master... And the divine master exists within you. Then who, who is the only individual that can be in control of the situation? You. Now, let, let's be real. Am I saying that you'll never have challenges and, and nothing will ever have to happen to you? That's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying you always have the divine power to overcome it. And you're always in control unless you allow another individual to take control over you. So this is how we can over-intellectualize things or sensationalize things. And we have to get out of that shit. Because at the end of the day, if we're talking about chemtrails and all these things, these conspiracies that are being done against us, again, the question I pose is then what are the solutions? Because the other issue I got, everybody and their mama knows the problem, but there's not too many that know the solutions. And I just mentioned to you a few minutes ago, the solutions are not that complicated. Okay, it's not that deep. Okay, we have to come to the reality. There is no Messiah coming for you. Bottom line, I don't give a shit what you believe in your mind. I don't care what religion, what holy books you believe in. There's nothing coming for you. There's nothing coming to save you. There is no apocalyptic event that's going to cause traumatic change at the spur of a moment. Because remember, all of this change is a gradual process. You've seen it with the pole shift, which began in 2012. And now, since those magnetic poles shifted in 2012, so did spiritual consciousness. And now you're saying from 2012 on to the present day, and here we are almost three years later... Think about since 2012 to now. Not only have things have been changing over the last 10 to 15 years, but there has been dramatic change in the last three years. And that's because this shift in consciousness. Okay? Factor all those things in. Okay? This is what's bringing about the change. And if you still have not come to the reality that the only master that's going to save you is yourself, then you're going to get lost in the shuffle. There's not going to be no spaceship coming to pick your ass up. The extraterrestrials that some people try to connect with 
you have to understand they exist within your DNA. You're not connecting. When you look at it in the perspective that you're trying to connect with something outside of yourself, then you disconnect yourself without you being aware of it subconsciously. Um, so all these ideologies where we're looking for something outside of ourselves, we have to we have to put that all to bed. We have to put that all to sleep. This also blocks the shift in our DNA and our consciousness to make that leap or that connection. And you will never understand the full benefits of this until you start working the spiritual magic. Because you can sit, uh, I mean, uh, one day when I have the time, I'll take the camera and I'll, I'll go to the library and I'll show you. I probably have just as many books as the next man. Hundreds and thousands of books that I've read over the last 20-something plus years and still counting. Um, and, and again, that's fine, but that those books are just used as a road map and a guide. Books shouldn't be your guide. They should just be a tool used to jumpstart your spirituality. But again, if you're reading all those books and studying all that information and not applying anything in those books that you're reading, then again, what's the fucking point? Um, we're past in our spiritual evolution of just sitting around and talking about history and it can only get you so far when we say the planet is going into a fifth dimensional existence let me let, let's clarify that and I, and I think I talked about this uh, on, on a previous class and you have people for an example still confounded and stuck in person place and thing Meaning anything you think about falls under the category of a person, a place, or a thing, which would be a three-dimensional existence. Quantum, which deals with four, okay, would be dealing with quantum physics. Fifth dimensional is dealing with pure mental, where the, where the higher science, the higher intellectual powers, spiritual powers are activated, clairvoyance, intuition, telepathy. Um, so you have people right now as we speak who are in that fourth dimensional stage and are having the spiritual experiences they can tap into the spirits around they can see spirits they can see ancestors they can communicate and be a receiving vehicle vehicle or energy conductor of a wealth of information for their ancestors which is preparing them for that fifth dimensional which is that pure mention, mental transition that we're heading towards right now so we, this is what means we have to take it up another notch you know if this was back in the 80s and the 70s going into the early 90s when it was a intellectual revolution then yeah that 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 was for that time but now we have to up step it we can't get stuck in specific methods and ideologies because we know the old saying when you deal with metaphysics anything that doesn't change dies and sometimes the problem is people don't want to change uh, I found in my personal experiences people claim they want change but I found that they want people to do it for them and that's two different things and like I've said before no great secret has ever been written down in a book so you could read a million books all of our great cultures anytime they wanted higher mysteries to be conveyed or passed on. It was always done from mouth to ear. In any high spiritual system, it's always done from mouth to ear. Because if it was written in a book, guess what, people? It wouldn't be a secret. We say that again. If it was written in a book, it wouldn't be a secret. So sometimes, and if this doesn't apply to you, what I'm about to say, it doesn't apply to you. Sometimes people think they're gonna find some great secret in a book and it's gonna change their life some people think by following a specific leader or, or belonging to a specific organization like the Nawapians or the Nation of Islam um, they want to accept in their mind that Dr. York or Minister Farrakhan can take them to the mothership or planet risk they really give themselves over and put their soul divinity in, in these people's hands and realizing those individuals can't do anything more for them that they couldn't do for themselves but when you raise somebody up to that divinity level and put yourself here now you create the separation 
So we 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 have to be clear, you know, on all these things and putting all these things into perspective. It's 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 all connected. We just have to know how to put it in into perspective and not get caught up in one specific aspect of it. Um, now again, you could you could look at this and say seven thing several things to yourself. And I hope you question yourself on several things from this post. You know, where are you at in your spiritual journey? Is the question. What is the intent when you set out or you study or you interact with you? What is the intent behind your interreaction? Okay? What I mean by that is, unfortunately, just like you have some individuals that get into this for ego driven purposes it's always the intent behind the action is what dictates the energy that will manifest for you spiritually let me say that again it's always the intent which will dictate the action which will determine the spiritual energy that manifests for you when you deal with different systems of magic and you have different systems you have mental magic which deals with working with the psyche and the subconscious mind. You have spiritual magic, which deals with working with the elements, herbs, um, spiritual or astral realms. You, you have ancestral magic, which are rituals and magic uh, specifically geared towards working with the deities and the ancestors. So there's different systems of magic, but these are the higher sciences that tie into our ancestors and are connected to our DNA. And this my friends is the solution okay this is the solution that's going to take us to the next level I'm gonna stop there I think I covered a lot um, just to make a couple quick announcements um, we had dr. Phil Valentine on the show this past Thursday um, we started the show Thursday just for those that might have came in late <clears throat> excuse me and might have missed them or caught the very end um, keep in mind, we've had Dr. Valentine on the show a couple of times, um, but because of his busy work schedule, he doesn't like to do things late at night. He kind of shuts down at an early portion of the evening, so we get him on early, so out of respect, uh, we can get him finished and done uh, for the fact he's taking time out of his busy, busy schedule um, to join us. So when we have Dr. Phil Valentine on the show, we start an hour early. We started at 8 o'clock, and I did send emails and communications out communicating that. Hopefully everybody got it. Um, so keep in mind, in the future, um, when he comes on, that you're, that you're aware of that. Um, and again, as you see on the show, we've had a multitude of guests on that all bring a different perspective because we want you, the listeners and the viewers, to get a, a broad perspective of what everybody brings to the table. We've had Dr. Delbert Blair on. We've had Dr. David Emotep on. Dr. Edward Bruce Bynum. Dr. Jewel Pulgram has been on. We've had uh, Brother Panic on several times. Um, we've had, uh, who else did I not miss? I said Dr. Valentine. Um, we've had uh, Sister Vera Courtney on a couple of times. Um, we've had even some European scholars on. We've had uh, Scott Allen Roberts, who deals with the whole reptilian agenda thing. We've had Ralph Ellis, who's an Egyptian uh, archaeologist slash scholar. I, I, I bring these people on, or we bring these people on the show, so you can get a broad perspective of the various levels of information that everybody brings to the table. So you can see for yourself. That's the whole point. Okay? And that's why we do what we do for that specific reason. So you'll see everybody, regardless, that has a different perspective, but you'll find the theme and the message that everybody is saying, regardless of what their specialty field is, they're all saying the same thing. You have to do the work yourself. You have to do the research, because the research and the work you put in is going to determine what you get out of it. So if you're one of those individuals that just wants to be talked to all the time, or likes being part of an organization where they're dictated to all the time, then you're only going to go so far. Now, if you take the information you're being taught and you apply it, that's going to take it to a whole other level. So, we've we've had that going on on the show. Um, so, wanted to put that out there. Um, again, so Dr. Edward Bruce Bynum will be on this Thursday night at 9 o'clock. Um, we'll have Brother Panic back on August 6th 
talking about a topic I hope you're all ready for. This is going to take it to the whole next level. We're going to be dealing with, do you really know what black magic, witchcraft, and Satanism is? And I think most people don't, for the most part. I'm not saying some of you out there are not familiar with it, but I think this is a topic that a lot of people are still spooked out about and really have no knowledge about. So we're going to go in deep and uh, heavy on that on August 6th. So I'm going to start putting that out there into the ethers so people can start preparing for that because that's going to be a hell of a show. And one thing I think we do on our show, we cover a lot of topics that people don't want to talk about. Um, and when I do these classes, I'm talking about topics people don't really want to talk about. I'm not here to cater to your ego and just say a bunch of shit that makes you feel good so you can watch a class and take the information and it, you know, and it makes you boastful and you stick your chest out and you feel like you're, you're special. That's not what this is about. Um, this, is, this, this, this goes beyond that. So the, the show and, and these classes are doing both of that. So um, definitely don't miss that. Also, we will have Labor Day weekend or the weekend after that, we are getting ready to do a live event here in Orlando, followed up by events in Fort Lauderdale, Miami. Um, so we're putting that out six to eight weeks in advance. So for those that are able to travel from out of state, because we deal with a lot of people all over the country, we, we want you guys to have that window to maybe prepare and if you're able to um, to take that trip. So that'll definitely be the Labor Day weekend or the weekend after. We'll have an official announcement on that. Probably by the time we go on the air Thursday night, um, we're getting that worked out follow, with, with the follow-up events. Um, so definitely, hopefully, we can see people there. I, myself, will be doing an event on August 1st, which I believe is a Saturday night, 7 p.m., Sophia's Garden on my app. You know, you can contact me on that. Uh, there's no charge uh, for all y'all that have come to my events. You know, we don't charge. We just ask you to support by buying books and, and uh, supporting the vendors. And, and those that have come to my uh, classes, last le lectures, know I bring a ton of books. Uh, if there's books on psychology, I got a bunch of them. If dealing with the Akasha memory field is your thing, we have that. If, if it's extraterrestrial information, we have that. If you're looking for books on ancient Egypt, we have that. If you're looking for books on the Sumerian culture, we have that. If you're looking for information on black history, we have that. If you're looking for information on secret societies, uh, you know, the, the Illuminati, conspiracy, and all the things that, we got all that information. So you, anybody knows that when I travel and I come to a class, I'm bringing tons of information with me for the sole purpose of you being able to tap into that information and you know have access to it now the other thing I get people always ask me as of right now it's just not my forte I know there's a lot of teachers and elders that that put books out I don't think that's one of my gifts of talents not that I couldn't write a book I think my more of my gift of talent is is teaching and interacting with the people I think that's one of the one of the things that I enjoy doing is it to say I would never write a book. I'm not saying I never would, but it's not something that um, I, I really have an interest in doing now because I get a lot of emails about that. Are there any books that I have written? And the answer is no. Um, I just don't think at this time that's not my call. I'm not saying that it would never happen in the future, but at the moment, no. I mean, look at Dr. Delbert Blair. He just put some of his first books out. Um, at, at a very old age. And by the way, Dr. Blair is still recovering, for those that want to know. And once he's back to 100%, we definitely want to get him um, back on the show. Um, so, yeah, that's what's going on. Just want to put those events out there. And again, um, there is a, a, you know, you can contact me personally on Facebook too, the Beniti Amon Ray page, B A N I T I A M U N R E, on Facebook. There's also the Awakening Universal Minds radio page where you can keep in tune with the radio show, guests, things that are coming up. And we appreciate all the support also on the radio show here on YouTube. You can also go see updates for the show. Mother Nubia Inc. Google page has a link and archive for all the radio shows, so you can check that out too. Um, and again, as I said earlier, I posted up a promotional video um, for those that are interested in spiritual consultations, people that are seriously interested um, very affordable and cheap and, and again for those I don't deal with the cheap ass people that bitch and complain uh, I address this on the show with panic why 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 do some of your brothers charge for the knowledge and the information well this is what we do for a living 
And I say to those people, you don't question, you know, for the so-called people that are on this whole black-white thing or the white man thing, if they came out with an iPhone 7 tomorrow, you're saying people that are bitching and moaning, you'd be the first people online waiting for hours to get a new iPhone or a new pair of sneakers. So don't question brothers that are doing spiritual work and need to be compensated for their time. Just If you're not interested, then you're just not interested. Who cares? But that's one thing I won't deal with and tolerate is people that bitch, whine, and complain. It's To me, it's comical because these are the same people that will wait in line for a new iPhone or a new pair of sneakers and they won't question nobody about price. They happily pull the money out of their pocket and they pay for the shit. So if you're going to bitch and whine about investing in your spirituality, then don't, don't even waste your time. It's irrelevant. Um, and I find that most of the people that bitch and moan and complain, those are the people that aren't doing anything anyway. So the next time somebody bitches and moans and complains to you about something you're doing, just stop them in their tracks and ask them, well, what is it you're doing? And you'll find out most of the time they don't have a, a logical explanation for that. But anyway, I think that's all I got for you now. Um, we'll see you on the next post and whatever direction the ancestors take us in. We will go uh, in that direction. And again, as I told you, I really don't plan anything out. I kind of just go with the spirit and I go with the ancestors. Maybe one day when I'm not so lazy, I will get up and take you over to the shrine and kind of show you some of the things we got going on here um, whenever whenever the spirit will and, and dictates that maybe we'll do that one day uh, I, I get a little comfortable after being out and about all day sometimes when I get to this little space right here I kind of get locked into this space um, you'll find most of the work my melanin and or the melatonin process that activates the subconscious and the neuromelanin works best late at night. Um, and that's when the melanin actually kicks into gear strong. It's not contrary to belief. It's at nighttime when the sun is down. When the sun is up is the time to recharge. That's actually a better time to sleep. Um, so they use that reverse psychology on you, but that's a whole other science. But anyway, I can keep going off ever. Let me stop here. I think we got enough. Uh, Brother Benitiam and Ray signing off, saying hotep, and we'll see you on the next post.